Yeah, so the markets yesterday, Monday, are uh, impressive. The banks, at least, were more impressive than they usually are. The KRE was moving up. You could tell that it was leading the markets. Um, yeah, definitely outperforming. I mean, you can see in the charts, but I was really watching the KRE versus the S&P. And, I mean, the KRE had very nice um, candles just the day before for Friday, let's say, so you had some reversal signals and yeah, the banks were moving up. And there was also, what was his name? Michael Burry, the big short guy. He was disclosed that he had bought the banks, including First Republic that went down. So not all of them fantastic buys, but I think that helped also. But yeah, the banks were moving up. It wasn't sending gold down. It was just an independent move on the bank's part. Uh, but anyway, the markets were up in general gold and silver up a little bit we're going to take a look at everything let's start with the s p look you know middle of the channel looking like some continuation maybe touching the top part you can see you know nice close best close in several days so it could warrant a move up we do have a, you know the news coming in today we have a lot of fed speakers so as usual news can pour uh cold water on any rally in any asset class but otherwise S&P looks good for a run to, let's say, 418-ish. NASDAQ, you know, fantastic close. I don't see why the rally would all of a sudden stop, aside from news. I mean, I think fundamentally, as usual, I say in every video, fundamentally, these things deserve to be a lot lower. I think we're in the consolidate complacency, actually, complacency um, rally period of a massive move down. So here's your big... A leg down, bear market, little complacency rally. And remember, the ascending is the weakest. So as soon as we lose this ascending in the NASDAQ, and obviously other, other charts have their own independent patterns, but generally they follow the same sort of pattern, this sort of ascending, which is the weakest chart pattern. As soon as you lose that, should move lower. And to be honest, if we go all the way down and test the lows, we're going to make new lows. But for now, you know, slow slide, move up. Maybe we're going to hit the 330s, maybe even 335. But I think we're going to fail before we get to 335. I, I do. I think we're going to have one massive surprise bearish candle in all of, this, all of the um, main markets. And then down we go. But otherwise, close a high of day, looking for 330, you know. Dow Jones, you can see that the Dow Jones is weaker than the S&P. If you remember a few days ago, S&P and Dow Jones were really, really similar. But now you can see Dow Jones is, you know, putting in some attempted reversal candles. But to be honest, yesterday it should have already reversed because we've already got two reversal candles and it still hasn't done anything. So if we get a, a slight red day in the markets today, we're well, going to see the Dow Jones close towards the lower part of these wicks and maybe even lower. And then it looks very bad. So actually, to me, it looks bad already. You know, even though these hammers are sort of reversal signals, it should have already reversed. So actually, I think the Dow Jones, and remember the Dow Jones and the Russell have have been weaker markets for some time, actually. I mean, I remember this period here where the Dow Jones was leading everything. It was unbelievably strong. And you can't say the same uh, for the Dow Jones. So right now, Dow Jones is pretty weak, I would say, relative to the others. So and just imagine a candle that closes towards the low here. It's not going to look good immediately here the next day, if not in one day, you know, one bad day. And as soon as you close there or even below, we're going to have to test the lows. So Dow Jones, weak. Russell, normally I would say is the weakest. Okay, yesterday it was the strongest. Why? Because of the banks, the KRE. We're going to get to that in, in three minutes, not even. So this is the first time it's closed outside of the descending but that's just because the banks had a beautiful day and it should have, it probably should have rallied a bit higher and closed a bit more because it's just been crushed relative to the others so much that it should have had a 2% day maybe, or maybe closed sort of above 176, you know, but we closed just outside and one day doesn't make a trend. The trend is obviously down, massively down, strong down. And I think if we get a red day today, which we could get, of course, we probably will. Then we're straight back down into the descending. And this is a fake signal. And then I'd probably have to move this here. I mean, look, normally a close outside of a descending is good enough. But you do need, you know, especially with, you've got to know like the background, you know, the Russell's been weak. 
it's 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 following the banks the banks are horrible um and you know you probably need several days outside of the descending like a close at least above 176 you know not just oh look technically my drawing says we're outside because you know your chart pattern could be generally correct but it might be off by a few millimeters or, or even one centimeter and yeah so you know i take it as a general uh, alert but for me i'm still not satisfied and i still think we're gonna go down i still think the russell will will make new lows very soon so if the dow jones starts to move down of course the russell will move down too so i'm looking for a bit more confirmation that there really is a breakout of this descending uh we'll probably look at the kre soon to see what that chart looks like but for me regardless of the technicals the russell is to be avoided because it's affiliated with the bank so much and the banks are fundamentally toast so yeah that's the russell i'm just going to leave the descending as it was because because it just deserves to be to be highlighted okay let's move to the banks xlf you know small rally here much smaller than the kre and the kbe you know, what can I say compared to the general ETFs here, the general markets, it's weak. It's not even in the middle of this channel. It should be higher. You know, you start to get any sort of reversal in the banks. We're straight back down here at the lows and then testing the absolute lows, you know, soon after. So for me, financials are a complete avoid. And fundamentally, you know, when I said fundamentally, the banks are weak. They are. I mean, we've got deposit flights. We're, we're working on data that's looking back that has a delay. For me, the big banks are, are, you know, they're benefiting from the small bank capital flights. But some of these big banks, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, their charts are bad. You know, JP Morgan, yeah, they're doing great. But, um, you know, higher interest rates hurts these banks. This idea that interest rates are, they make more profits from loans. No, no, no. They've got exposure to derivative crap that, you know, is really hurting their balance sheet. And all of this unrealized losses there's a lag effect and you know the market is working on interest rate hikes from months ago and every you know one or two months we get a rate increase that is still not being felt by the market so for me the banks are a total avoid even jp morgan i mean jp morgan i'm seeing its stock but you know it's probably let's look at it yeah okay whatever you know there are better buys out there just look at any of those you know amazon or, or google is probably a better buy still not that I'm interested in any of those right now, although I am in Amazon. But the point is the XLF, you know, not very strong, not the best rally. If we get any reversal, we instantly look weak. And there's a good reason for that, you know, fundamentally and technically weak, I think is how I'd summarize it. KBE, even more so, okay, we have this nice strong candle. And, you know, look at these two candles here. It's it's more the KRE. Let me jump to it straight away. Look, I actually made a video yesterday. I just didn't post it. Uh, it was bad timing. I did it too late in the morning. The market was open straight after. And um, and actually, my other video was was starting to gain quite a few views. So I thought, let me just leave that and not interrupt the, the viewership for once. But I did say in that video that we have a bit of reversal in the KRE. Look, you have this one candle that doesn't look too good, but you have this nice reversal candle. So actually, in that video, and it's kind of obvious, you know, you have a nice candle here, uh, reversal, even though it's red here is actually a green candle um and then we got that reversal i don't know if it was the michael burry um stock picks i don't think it was though i think it's the the reversal candle that really sent the banks higher but look we're nowhere near out of the woods and if we start to move higher regardless if it's the kre or the kbe we still have resistance just here and i mean if we go above that then let's see how high we get back into this channel but I think we're going to soon get some resistance in the banks and it will send the banks lower. KBE, KRE, and then we're right back at the lows. So the banks are, you know, two, three, four trading days away from making new lows. And therefore, you know, Russell, Dow Jones will start to look weak. And then maybe that's what will put the top in and the S&P and the NASDAQ. Okay, let's go to rates rates that i always feel like they want to go up but some days we just have fear and then they get smacked down and it just ruins the chart but for now the one year chart looks okay right i mean this chart pattern is pretty clear we have the support the resistance some 
immediate support here if we lose the ascending, which I don't know if we will, because the one year is pretty strong on the upside. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to leave it there. Five years resistance. Support is the ascending. You know, the day is young. I've just started here, Europe, very early. So if we start to see a bit of selling in the yield, so bonds being bought, let's look at the TLT, for example. I haven't looked at that in several days. Yeah, middle of the channel, you know, if we start to go lower, if if bonds get sold off, then we're looking at rates going up and testing their resistance. If it starts to get bought, let's look, we've got resistance here descending. And if it starts to want to break out, let's see if we can take out 110 close above it and then maybe even rally all the way up to 120 in the TLT. But otherwise, you know, the one year is special, but the two year, look, we've got the descending. They've all got their descending charts to take out. This could happen today. The two year could close and the two years the most important for me. The two and the 10, remember that. But you could start to close above the descending and start to rally higher. Let's see. Otherwise, you know, if they start to move lower, you've probably got markets going down. People are buying bonds in fear and gold's probably going up. Five year, they're all very similar. 10 year, this one, I haven't put the descending. It's not strong enough. I could, but there's no point. Um, and we've got clear support and clear resistance. So let's continue to monitor those yields. The 30 year is still acting stronger. Look, it's sort of closing above this resistance. So maybe the 30 year and the two year is what to watch the most. Um, but let's see if yields go up. The 30 year is at 40%. That's that's probably where it's going next. So continue to monitor the yields. Nothing really too crazy yesterday, but look, 30 year did have its best close. So today, Tuesday, Let's see if there's any continuation. Uh, let's look at the dollar. For me, the dollar is probably the most important asset to watch for commodities, especially gold and silver. Yesterday, gold and silver did okay. We're going to get to them later. But the dollar did retrace a lot of this breakout. I think the dollar will retrace, hit support roughly. It doesn't have to touch the line. It can just do it. Now, now is sufficient to call a retracement. It could overshoot, but I still think we're going to run back up to at least 103.5. I mean, I don't need to guess, but I just feel like we are going to move a bit higher. This is just a standard retracement. It's a nice move, right? Those last two days were pretty big. So we had a small retracement and you have to think about what's, what's that going to do to gold and silver. Um, you know, is this a fake rally and it goes back down? Whatever, we never know. But I do think that it's going to go a little higher, actually. So, so far, just a small retracement, nothing else to really say. Small retracement in the dollar. And the news will impact it, of course. So let's, it's it's all about news too. Let's go straight to the commodities, copper. I mean, look at this, this is quite nice. You know, it flushes, it hits support and it's bounced off support. So far, so good. But now that it's done, it's bounced. Now what? You know, and if gold, if the dollar starts to move higher, let's say it's doing its little retracement, copper goes up a little bit more, maybe doesn't even take out yesterday's high. What if then the dollar starts to rally and go towards that 3.5 level? We start to test the lows again. We start to close below the ascending, maybe even below this candle, 3.67, let's say. What if we close 3.66? then we probably move lower, you know, maybe 3.55 this area or something because of these candles. So, and maybe, maybe it goes even lower after that. So just watch out with the dollar, you know, it's, um, it's come down a lot. It's consolidated. It hasn't flushed its absolute low of one, 110.8 or sorry, 100.8, 101 basically. Um, so if the dollar does rally higher, watch copper, Watch copper's weakness and also watch if it doesn't, if it closes below this level, this candle here, because it'll be outside the, the ascending and obviously below this low. So it could then flush a little lower and maybe even lower than this. You know, it could get to this level. So that's copper. But so, you know, so far, I really like the technicals. I like the fact that it respected this ascending. It didn't just pick this out of thin air. Natural gas, this actually is starting to look finally ready for a breakout. I personally think it needs to close above 2.5. I think it's a nice number, 2.5. I think this high here is to be respected more than this high of this candle, because I think this doesn't really count. It's just ventured all the way up, but then closed 
very weak. So why would you count that? But this, you know, it respected it the next day. And then you could say these days also it failed to get above it. I just feel like it's um it's the real resistance. And actually yesterday, look, it did actually test that area. And it's 2.5. So for me, it's all about closing above 2.5. And if we do, I think we can get to 2.8 and maybe even three. Why not three? Keep it simple. And remember, zoom out. These moves are definitely possible. I think you'll have a lot of short covering, a lot of momentum buying, a lot of chasing, a lot of algorithms, blah, blah, blah. I think we move up to three and watch out. What if there's a close above three? People start to chase and freak out. Maybe it's time to go to four just before the gap. So natural gas looking good. I'm happy with it. I'm in it and um, see what happens. Okay, WTI oil. I think it's important that oil stops going down around here <laughs> otherwise you know zoom out nice ascending long term so the longer the trend the longer the um the credibility of the ascending the stronger the support and and you know if we close below it the the more likelihood we have of a real flush so you do not want oil going back down to 63 and closing below 63 would really that would really accelerate some move to the downside, like in the 50s straight away. I, I don't even know if 60 would hold. I think it would just flush and into the 50s. So we've got this, you know, obviously we flushed here, strong bounce. Remember this move up here, the, the OPEC and even the non-OPEX coordinated a, um, a supply cut. So sent it up. I didn't, okay. A retracement is normal. I did not expect a retracement all the way back down. That was surprising. And we did actually make a new low. At least we ventured below this low. But we bounced nicely. And now it has to start to go sideways, stabilize, and venture back up. Because if we just start to go sideways and venture lower, that chart's not going to look good at all. It's going to get a lot of people nervous, a lot of shorts happy and excited, and probably a lot of longs ready to play some stop losses. I just feel like it has to stop going down now. And yesterday was a good move. You know, that's a move in the right direction. Just sort of a nice green day. Today, it needs to hold. It needs to stop going down. It needs to not close below 70. We start to have closes below 70, maybe. Well, obviously, that's the first step towards going lower. So just watch out with oil. If it starts to flush, to be honest, that's a lot of opportunities and it could be a seriously good buying opportunity because I think oil warrants to be higher. It's, um, you know, an absolutely vital commodity. There's no substitute for it. Um, we have the oil, the, the war going on in the background. You have the new alliances that are totally dependent on, on oil. I think there's a lot of reasons for oil to go way above a hundred. So if it starts to drop in the fifties, You've got a 100% move in a commodity like oil. This isn't some cheap Chinese stock. And it could go even much higher than that. So oil, it could be a really good gift. Um, but just watch oil. Yeah. Uranium. As you can see, resistance is, prior resistance is acting as support perfectly. So that's um, it's good to see the technicals work in there. I obviously want the technicals to fail. I want my chart to, 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 to malfunction here. I'd like uranium to drop. And I think if it does drop, it goes all the way back down to this ascending zone. But for now, it's holding and it makes sense. And if there's a bit of a rally, then, then resistance will be the last high, just to be very, very short term about everything. <clears throat> you know, if we start to move back up, it needs to take out its old high of just above 21, and then we move up here. And if we start to move up here, I remember saying this a few weeks ago, if we do start to move up, you know, nothing happens in a straight line, maybe it just retraces again, moves up. You'll probably get to this zone here where it coincides with several resistance points, more, more importantly, this long-term resistance. And that will act as resistance. I'm sorry, but it's not just going to go above and keep going. If it does, then it must be on news. Uh, so then that'll probably go back down, retrace a little bit, and then who knows, maybe then you get a breakout. But I don't want that to happen because I 
I'm still at the station and the train has left. So I'd like a bit of a reversal from the train so I can get back into it. Uh, what I'd really like is just a massive, unlikely, huge bearish candle. Um, but that's not going to happen. So I'll delete that straight away. But yeah, uranium is looking good. You know, just consolidating at the prior breakout of this resistance, which so far is holding the support. So let's see what happens there. I really want to get into uranium. Gold and silver, to be honest, gold held. I mean, gold has really outperformed silver on this flush here. So gold has, again, held 2,000. Okay, yesterday it didn't even go down there. It actually had a bit of a green day. Today doesn't count. The day's just started. You can see, just to be very, very zoomed in about it, that resistance at two, uh, 2,022. I need to take out these lines, but they do count, you know, you want to take out that 2022 and not just take out you want to close above it whatever it's not straight you know close above 2022 and then you can actually go venture at 2040 and then if you're 2040 why not go test 2050 and it might be on you so gold is set a very very tight channel now you know you, let's say you got 2022 ish or whatever that is 2023 and on the downside very obvious 2000 so let's just see which way it goes. Uh, if we start to move lower, then you got this 1970. I don't think it's 1980. I think it's 1970. I think, you know, a lot of people are thinking 1980, but it'll probably dip just below 1976 or whatever. But yeah, that's the immediate two levels, you know, support 2000, support 1970, resistance 2020, two-ish. And then I'm going to say 2040, 2050. So let's see which way it goes. But gold has held up very well compared to silver, which is crushed down. But it's holding this very, very significant descending resistance. So it's back tested. It's acting as support. But my worry is, again, the dollar. You know, what if the dollar... Remember, dollar went down yesterday. So gold and silver being slightly green is the least you'd expect. Silver, I just worry that if the dollar starts to rally him, to the next level that this level won't hold as much as people think everyone's looked at looking at this level and yes i agree you know i've had this level for a long time months i've had this this uh this trend line but what if the dollar just goes to 103.5 i don't know if silver's just gonna hang around here it might just dip again and i'm not really sure where it will go actually it's not obvious it won't just go all the way down to this ascending forget it but I'm not sure which trend line, because it's not obvious to me. You know, it's not obvious where the trend line is. It this, is it here ish? Is it? I'm not sure. So I'll let the chart do it, and then when I see three or four candles and a bit of support, I'll say, okay, there it is, and maybe then I add. But I am, I am not adding. I've done little nibbles just because I know this trend line is a trend line, but I'm actually worried that the dollar goes a little higher. So I am not considering this trend line as some sort of, you know, Gandalf, you shall not pass uh, area. So I'm just, um, I'm watching the dollar. And obviously I'm watching gold and silver and I'm watching everything else, right? <laughs> the banks and the markets. But I just worry that, that if the dollar rises higher, this this just doesn't act as strong support and it just goes lower quite easily. Let's look at the GDX, GDXJ very quickly. That's kind of holding on much better. GDXJ, same thing. It hasn't got that massive flush below the, let's say, the April zone. If you go back to gold, look, this is the April zone. All those candles there. If you look at silver, this is the April zone. So silver's really underperformed even the miners. So which is kind of good news because I'm kind of in miners more than silver and gold. So you could say the miners are sort of following gold more, um, which is okay. So, so far they've held and they bounced okay. You know, that's not the worst bounce in the world. The worst bounce is where you, you're not even green. You're sort of sideways completely. And uh, any move down in gold and silver and they go down to the next level. But so far the bounce is okay. Let's see if gold starts to close above, above uh, 2022. Um we can move higher, but I just feel like silver is lacking that strength in the bounce so far. Maybe it can muster some strength after one or two more days and start to take out this little, you know, this zone here. 
24.2 ish. You see that? We close above that. Then we rally back to prior support, act as resistance. But you know, there's going to be a lot of resistance in silver for it to go all the way up to 25, 26. You need some news. So unfortunately, silver's chart has been a bit destroyed, and it's very rare that you see a chart get flushed like that and go all the way back up. The only time I've seen it, by the way, is Bitcoin, just very quickly. Not the only time, but the only time I can think of now. You know, where you have a flush and then a move right back up is Bitcoin, and that was on the banking crash. So I think silver just needs some time to see how, where it gets support, whether it's here or it's lower, if we actually go lower. But silver's chart is kind of destroyed a bit. So I'd expect resistance at the 24.5. And if we go higher than... Then 25.5, 26, also a lot of resistance. But for the miners, they will see less resistance. But you need gold to go up, for these to go up at least. And you know, how how much can will gold's rally fail with the resistance that silver will, will meet on the way? You know, if gold, if gold's rallying and silver's starting to rally too, silver's gonna get a lot of selling here. So I don't know how high gold can go. But, you know, if there's news, to be honest, it takes one or two days and then the pattern will reverse. Otherwise, the miners, I'm not sure. Okay, support, correct. 33, no problem. Resistance, I'm going to delete this. Because, yes, I would say that, you know, 34 point, you can see the support here, one, two, three. But I don't know. I don't think it will act as resistance because if we're moving up, there's probably something big going on in the background and i would say resistance is more 35.5 slash 36 so i'm just going to leave it like that without the trend line gdxj i'm going to remove this one too many lines here yes this descending kind of counts but it doesn't exist on the gdx that's interesting but i'll leave it on the gdxj and to be honest no resistance until the high could say there's another one here ish you know I really hate lots of lines just like you guys, but unfortunately, I think this one does count this descending. So let's see, GDX, GDXJ outperforming silver, following gold. So let's see if gold can drag everyone up if we do move up, but definitely possible that we move lower. So watch the support zones. I think it's pretty clear, GDXJ and GDX, very clear. Gold is obviously 2000, and then we get to 1970. Silver, well, the only support zone is where we were, you know, let's say, where we are now and then obviously a close below this tail here uh, and all that it's going to be dependent on the dollar bitcoin i'm not going to really cover it had a nice rally yesterday but it's short-lived it's just a fake out here with a rally but watch out we need the close below twenty six thousand five hundred. it didn't do it on this day on this hammer which is probably why we mustered some strength people got excited that it didn't close below it i think we're gonna close below it and then have a a move lower, probably below 25,000. Okay, that'll do. Sorry, it was slightly long. Um, And I want to try and do these after the markets on the same day rather than very early European hours. Good luck today.